This video is about a process called endocytosis. It's this process that some cells are able to carry out where they engulf or enclose particles or large molecules using their membrane as a way of bringing them into the cell. It's one of the active processes for moving things inside of cells. And so that means, of course, that it requires energy. And if you're looking at this diagram and you're thinking that it kind of reminds you a bit of Pac-Man, then yeah, there's some similarities there. It's the way the cell engulfs and encloses itself around the outside of particles. But not just small things, sometimes entire cells can be engulfed through endocytosis. This video is all about looking at that process in more detail and the two specific types that there are. So let's take a look. So I just had this diagram showing you sort of like what takes place in endocytosis where the cell engulfs and encloses a particle and brings it inside. Sometimes you're going to be asked to be able to draw what happens and you can do it in a bit of a simpler way than this. So I'm going to talk you through some of the stages of endocytosis. So first of all, there's here's a really basic diagram of a cell and here's some sort of particle or large molecule. It's a desired particle or a desired large molecule. It's something that the cell wants to be able to bring inside. So what happens first is the cell membrane engulfs and starts to wrap itself around that particle. Remember, this is just a very simple 2D diagram, but remember the cell is actually a three-dimensional object. So it starts to, you can imagine little indentation forms around the outside of that particle. And it is like Pac-Man, it's kind of like the cell starting to create this little mouth around the outside of the particle. What happens next is the particle is fully enclosed by the cell membrane. It completely wraps around. And in your diagram, this bit's quite important because you'll notice that that membrane is just one continuous membrane wrapping around that particle there. You can imagine in, in 3D, it's actually wrapping right around and forming the particle uh, vacuole or vesicle, if it's really small around the outside of that thing there. So then finally, it actually breaks away. The vacuole or vesicle breaks away and it's now completely inside of the cell. And then there are these uh, different ways that the cell can access those materials, depending on the type of endocytosis process that this is. But if you're drawing a diagram of endocytosis, they are your simple representations that you can use to show the way that it's happening. Now, a useful thing to remember with understanding what endocytosis is and how to describe what's happening here is just in its name. Endocytosis is where substances enter the cell. And I've underlined here, E-N, endo, E-N, enter. It's my simple way of remembering that that's what endocytosis is. Because remember there's the other process, exocytosis. It's in a separate video. That's how substances exit the cell. And it's, it's essentially the opposite of endocytosis. But endo is for entering. Um, I also like to use that to help me remember these terms to help me explain it. It's where it engulfs the food particle and it's also where it encloses the particle. So that's gonna help you. Endocytosis, where substances enter the cell, it's where the cell membrane engulfs the particle and the particle ends up fully enclosed in the membrane. Hopefully that will help you with describing the process. So now that we understand the basic process around how endocytosis happens, it's just worth knowing that there are two different types of endocytosis. There's phagocytosis and pinocytosis. And they're basically the same thing, just depending on the size of the substance that's entering the cell. So for larger substances, they enter via phagocytosis. 
when these large substances enter via phagocytosis, we end up with what's called a food vacuole, which is this here. And then the way the cell digests and accesses what's inside of the food vacuole is by these small vesicles called lysosomes, which contain digestive enzymes. And they find their way to the food vacuole, and then they release their digestive enzymes, which break down the food vacuole and allow the cell to access the particle that's inside. An example of phagocytosis in action is in our immune system, where our white blood cells can take in any potentially harmful bacteria, the, the whole bacterial cell, take it in through phagocytosis, and then destroy that bacterial cell as a way of keeping us healthy. Because phagocytosis is for the larger particles, it's often referred to as cell eating. Phagocytosis, cell eating. Pinocytosis is the same process, but on a much smaller scale. It's for liquids or large molecules, but they enter through the cell in the same way that we've looked at already with the cell membrane engulfing around them. And they end up in these tiny vesicles. Uh, obviously not to scale here, but just two diagrams to show you the difference between the two. Uh, an example of pinocytosis in action is the absorption of fat droplets into the cells that line our small intestine. Because pinocytosis is for smaller substances and often liquids, you probably guessed it, phagocytosis is cell eating, pinocytosis is referred to as cell drinking. So that's it, it's a summary of endocytosis. Generally, the process occurs in the same way, but there are these two types, phago and pinocytosis. I hope this has helped you to understand them in more detail. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.